Let us start asking ourselves what is fusion. Fusion is the process that powers the sun, and our motivation here is to reproduce this process on Earth in a, in a controlled way. If we're able to do that, we'll have at our disposal a clean and unlimited source of energy that can change humanity forever. Fusion is about the reaction of uh, two hydrogen atoms, and it's practical and limited because it requires deuterium and lithium, and they can easily be extracted from seawater. It's also clean because it does not produce emissions, and it's also safe because we can easily stop the fusion reaction. On Earth, fusion will be reproduced on fusion reactors. And the core of the fusion reactor is the plasma that you have on your right, where the fusion reaction takes place. Unfortunately, nowadays, there are still so many open technological issues related to the design of efficient fusion reactors. For this reason, as you probably know, there is an international project called ITER that has been launched. ITER aims to build the largest ever fusion reactor, which will serve as a large scale scientific experiment to gain all the knowledge that we require to make fusion a reality by 2014. But I have to say that now ITER is under construction and some experiments will only be available by 2030. It poses a real problem for the success of the whole fusion roadmap. The reason is that we don't have the knowledge and we don't have the experiments to gain that knowledge. Let me put you an example. Tritium, an isotope of hydrogen, is required for the fusion reaction, but tritium cannot be obtained from nature. As a result, the fusion reactor must produce all the tritium that it needs to operate. And engineers have some ideas about how to attain that. But the validation experiments for their technological concepts will only be available by 2030. In this situation, the development of virtual fusion labs is a must because we cannot wait so long for the real experiments. With regard to the simulation of these fusion reactors, I have to say that they involve multiple scales, like in turbulent flows, as a smoke, and also multiple physics, which make these simulations extremely hard. They require the most advanced numerical algorithms, but also huge computational resources. Fusion research takes benefit from exploiting the largest supercomputers today. A supercomputer is a set of processors that are interconnected, and current supercomputers have about one million processors. But in the near future, we expect a 100 times improvement in terms of peak performance of supercomputers. This improvement will not be based on faster processors. It will be based on a much larger number of processors. By 2020, we expect to have at our disposal the exascale supercomputers with billions of processors. If we are able to efficiently exploit these exascale supercomputers, we will be able to run current simulations much faster or simply solve problems that are out of reach now. For instance, we will be able to perform the whole simulation of a plasma in a fusion reactor like ITER, which is out of reach now. To efficiently exploit billions of processors is a very challenging task. Our research is about the development of radically new numerical algorithms that will perfectly fit to the underlying hardware of these exascale supercomputers. If we succeed, this research will lead to advanced simulation tools that will allow engineers to validate their technological designs, like for instance, in tritium production, without the need to wait so long for the real experiments. So summarizing, advanced simulation on exascale supercomputers will be very important for the success of fusion and to finally bring the power of the sun to Earth. But I have to say that our research is very transversal and can also be applied to many other physical phenomena. As an example, in the frame of uh, clean energy related problems, uh, large scale scientific computing is and will be very important for the simulation of geothermal reservoirs, CO2 sequestration modeling, or wind farms, just to mention some examples. So thank you very much for your attention.